ओके गुड मॉर्निंग गर्ल्स हाउ यू हाउ आर यू पीपल ओके यो लेट मी स्टार्ट विद अवर फोर्थ यूनिट आई हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड विद अ फोर्थ यूनिट इन अवर लास्ट क्लास आई हैव इंट्रोड्यूस्ड यू विद अ सिंबल टेबल एट द टाइम यप नाउ लेट अस कंटिन्यू विद अदर टॉपिक्स ऑफ द सेम यूनिट एज यू कैन सी ओवर हियर द नेम ऑफ दिस टॉपिक इज रन टाइम स्टोरेज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ओके I hope the video is clear to all of you. Okay, so let us begin with this. Uh, I I have also planned to make this PPT, but uh, couldn't do so. If you people get any doubts, let me know. And if this procedure is not good for you, then also please inform me. Okay, so let us start with the topic. See, girls. Uh, until now, we have learned how a compiler works. so what happens in the compiler is it converts the high level language to the target code the target code is present in the assembly language right but you uh, you would have analyzed this that we haven't used any of the memory until now uh, the important part of a compiler is that of a symbol table in com uh, in converting the high level code to target code we are continuously using the symbol table which i have shown you in the last class now when the high level language is converted into the target code uh, it needs to be run and to make this program run the we need to have the access of the operating we need to have the access of the operating system so op this operating system uses the memory storage and this memory storage is known as runtime storage administration this administrating all the memory in the operating system is known as runtime storage administration okay i hope the introduction is clear to you let us proceed further so now this runtime storage administration is divided into four segments this memory which i'm talking about like what memory i'm talking about over here i'm talking about after conversion of high level to the target code the target code program need to be executed and to execute that we require memory i'm not talking about the symbol table over here symbol table is the part of the compiler which is used when we want to convert the high level to the low level language i'm talking about another memory which is used when we are executing the program so this memory is known as runtime memory and this is divided into four segments the diagram i hope is clear to you okay so the last part the basic part of this segment this memory is of the code area the code area over here is of fixed size and it holds the target code target code what you mean by the target code the target code is that code which we have uh, you know we we have converted the high level language to the target code so that code is stored in this area called code area okay and it is of fixed size then comes your static or global variable part this is again of fixed size and it holds the constants and the global variables clear so what let me uh, explain this further like this part of the memory stores the constants and the global variable see whatever are the constants we don't need we the size of the constants is fixed the value of the constant is fixed same thing is with the global variables we don't tend to change it now and then it's like something which is declared before and it will remain throughout the program so such values are stored in the second part of the memory and the two parts collectively is collectively is managed during the compile time like when we compile the program this two things come into place like the code is assigned to the code area and then the constants and the global variables are assigned to the second part of the memory is this clear girls okay 
then moving further we have this thing called stack now and stack is again combined with another part of the memory which is heap heap and stack collectively form dynamic memory allocation dynamic memory allocation this two things comes into play during the runtime runtime when we run the program this two things comes into play now let me elaborate this two things um in a more clear manner see girls uh, when we are executing the program we are continuously working with the local and non local data so when we are working with the local and non local data uh, local data is the one which we which is local to the procedure or the function and non local data is the one which is defined in the inner blocks of the same procedure so now local data is managed by the stack and non local data is managed by the heap is that clear local data is managed by the stack non local data is managed by the heap clear so local data how the local data is managed by stacks is through the use of activation records very 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 important this can come for two marks this can come for four marks and in fact this whole answer is dependent on the activation record they will see how you are writing the activation record and the marks will be allotted to you so the local data uh is managed by the stack and the stack requires activation records the other thing which is non local data is uses the heap this heap is a larger version it uses local as well as the non local data clear is my phone shaking much i hope not okay let us proceed further now okay so now goes now this is runtime allocation runtime allocation is divided into two parts that is the same administration which i'm talk which i was talking about the runtime allocation administration this two ha this thing is having two main parts one is the implementation of the stack and the other one is the implementation of block structured language yeah, yeah. this stack is uh, the simple allocation scheme and this is the heap allocation so what we'll be doing is in this class we'll just learn about the simple stack allocation scheme clear so let us start with this as said to you that uh, in order to have this stack allocation we require activation records this activation records like activation records is a structure which takes the form of the stack you know how a stack look like it has a top and uh, it follows last and first out procedure right so whoever comes in uh, last they will be executed first so this activation records follows the stack structure and this activation records what are this activation records the activation records basically for every procedure procedure in the sense function see we all know that a program has different procedures it has different functions so the activation records are they are activation records for every procedure in the program for every function in the program so whatever procedures are there see girls let me again remind you this we have we, we have completed about the structure of the compiler we have done with the syntactic and uh, we have done with the intermediate code generator we have done with the code thing and all this unit is just about how uh, how the memory is allocated when we are running the program after this will be coming to the optimization part of the compiler firstly we need to understand what is the uh, how the program is run and executed so 
to run the program we have the memory which is said to be runtime allocation uh, ad the memory management is said to be runtime allocation administration and it is managed in uh, it is managed um like it uh, it is managed through this two schemes one is a stack allocation scheme and the other one is heap allocation scheme so in order to have the stack allocation scheme we need activation records what are the activation records activation records are the records which keep the account of different procedures in a program for every function in a program we have the activation record let us see the structure of the activation records you will get a better idea of it okay okay this is the structure of the activation record over here you see it starts from here this one is the temporary variables which is an optional thing then we have local data the local uh, variables and all then we have access link it is also known as static link and it refers to the non local data it refers to the non local data see i am talking about only stack implementation over here and stack implementation is all about local data so we don't have this part of the activation record is optional when we are talking about stack implementation it is uh, it is not present when i am talking about stack implementation whereas when i am talking about uh, heap implementation this part come into play okay as for now it is just for the non local data but it is there in the structure of the activation record clear then comes the control link the control link is also known as dynamic link and it is for uh, it gives the link to the calling procedures like singles um, for example um, add is calling sub so add is the calling function and sub is the called function so the control link from the sub function points to the add function like who is calling sub function is mentioned in this link in this block over here i hope i'm clear see what i'm to what i'm saying is i am saying you like there is add function and in this add function i have sub function so what happens the sub function have this link have this link as to who is calling the sub function like some is calling called by add function right so sub function holds the link of the add function then the actual parameters actual parameters is you all know what are actual parameters like when we call a function we pass on the values and that values are known as actual parameters return values we all know what are the return values every procedure returns some value and that comes in the first the topmost bl block of the activation record hope this diagram is clear to you yeah now very very important point was the important point is like for every procedure in the program you have the separate you have the separate activation record for every procedure like in this program i have two procedures one is add and one is sub so for both the functions or procedures i have separate activation records clear now the sub activation record what we do is we have this in the form of a stack firstly for sub sorry firstly for add and then for sub so add comes in the below part of the stack and then comes the sub in the above part of the stack as we know that when we are executing stack the top uh, part gets executed first it is 
last and first out so sub comes last and hence it is get it gets executed first then at gets executed you will not get it let me uh, give uh, explain you this thing through this example now now this is the example over here you see it's a simple factorial program which we all are aware of so the mean function is starting it is having a local variable f and f then mean function is calling a factorial function 3 this factorial function is defined over here what is uh, happening over here fact has given a constant that is actual parameter 3 and with this our control has shifted to the fact definition so the 3 value is given to n now what happens if n value is equals to 1 then we return 1 that is if n is 1 then the answer the factorial of 1 is 1 else what we do we multiply n and recursively calls fact we multiply n with calling factorial again so n into that is 3 into 3 minus 1 that is we are calling factorial function with now with the parameter 2 now fine so 3 into 2 so this factorial is now being called with the parameter 2 firstly it was called with 3 now it is being called with 2 so what happens firstly mean is calling factorial 3 then factorial 3 is calling factorial 2 factorial 2 is calling factorial 1 now one very important thing because here we are having four procedures for all these four procedures we have different activation record activation record for main activation record for fact activation record for sorry activation record for fact with three parameter activation record for fact with two as parameter and activation record for fact with one as the parameter so for every recursion uh, uh, activation record needs to be created that is the period thing over here for every procedure in the program we requires an activation record okay now you can see over here this is the structure of the stack this is the structure of the stack I hope the phone is clear to everyone okay so you can see that I have the same structure of the activation record over here but this activation record they are all together four activation records over here so as you know that activation record consists of this six fields fine now girls one very important point we don't mention the field which is not there in the procedure like for example if a procedure doesn't have the access link we omit that field if the procedure doesn't have uh, actual parameter we omit that field so say in the same way i have created this thing just a second okay now this both things are here now uh, the video is clear i guess so we have six fields in the activation record but we when we are you know actually implementing the act, uh, activation record for different procedures in the program we don't tend to mention all the six fields we only mention the fields which are available and we avoid the fields which are not available like for example over here the main function in the program the main function in the program don't have then uh, don't have the temporary variable hence this thing hence this thing can be completely avoided then what what's the next field the next field is the local data the activation record in the activation record the next field is of the local data now what is the local variable available in main the local variable available in main is f hence i have mentioned f over here fine 
then what is the next field next field is access link access link is only for the non local data and we are implementing stack over here so this field is automatically gone then is our control link i said you control link is for the calling procedure so who is calling main function main function is called by no one so what happens that there is no dynamic link for the main function we don't have the dynamic link for the main function then what is the next field the next field is the actual parameter do main have any parameter over here no main doesn't have any parameter hence the field is again empty what is the next value next field it's a return value what is the return value of main the main is starting here it is being returned over here the return value excuse me girls okay we get the return value only after we have executed all the factorials so as far now i am keeping the return value empty this is the final value over here so this is the uh, activation record for main function this much fine and this total is my stack girls this is the activation record it is the collection of activation records for different procedures fine then is my activation record for factorial 3 so factorial 3 doesn't have any temporary variable it doesn't have a local parameter does it have a local parameter no it doesn't have a local parameter so that the uh, field is omitted then it has dynamic link does it have a dynamic link yes it has been called by the main function hence it is being pointed to the main function over here then do it have a parameter yes it has a parameter 3 hence it is mentioned over here then what is its return value we didn't get any return value as of now we'll get it only after we get the value of factorial 2 and factorial 1 so we i have left the space empty so this is activation record for factorial 3 then is the activation record for factorial 2 again it doesn't have a temporary variable it doesn't have a local variable it doesn't have a yeah it doesn't have now the next thing is it has a dynamic link yes it has been called by the factorial 3 so dynamic link is pointing to the uh, arithmetic record of factorial 3 then it has a parameter 2 and it has a return value but the return value will get it only after executing factorial 1 so this is activation record for factorial 2 then is the activation record for factorial 1 what about the factory activation record for factorial 1 here i don't have again the temporary variables i don't have the local data what i have i have a dynamic link it has been called by factorial 2 hence the link it has a parameter 1 hence field it has a return value 1 now how i got this one i got this one because if you see that if n is equals to 1 then i'll be returning 1 so my n value that is my parameter is 1 now so what will be my return value it will be 1 so now come over here see return value is equals to 1 so if how uh, it's mentioned over here if n is equals to 1 return is 1 now this links to the uh, activation record of 2 what is being said over here return 2 into 1 like my parameter is 2 and what is the value it's 1 so 2 is returned to activation record 3 now this value is multiplied with the actual parameter 3 and i get the value 6 which is returned to main activation record and in main activation record gets the final return value as 6 is this clear to everyone 
आई होप गर्ल्स आई विल बी सेंडिंग यू द फोटो कॉपीज ऑफ दिस नोट्स सो यू कैन अगेन हैव अ लुक अ डिटेल लुक इन दिस एंड देन आई विल ऑल्सो बी सेंडिंग यू द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द फील्ड्स लाइक वॉट ऑल आई हैव सेड यू इज रिटर्न ओवर यू सो आई विल बी सेंडिंग द फोटो कॉपी ऑफ दिस एज वेल एंड सम theoretical notes which is not of that important but it is required for you to write the answer so that thing will be sent again sent as photocopies to you fine okay girls thank you so much and if you have any doubts you can either message me on whatsapp or you can or you can ask me over here